Have you ever had to wait on God? Amen. Well, you in the right place today. And again, he sent the dove out from the ark. Father God, thank you for the reading of your word. Father, today, Lord, I pray, Lord, that your word manifest itself. I pray, Lord, that it brings revelation today, Lord. I declare and decree right now, Jesus, that every seed that you use out of this preacher's mouth will land on good ground. It will open up the eyes of the blind. It will take blinders off, God. They will understand that it's just, this is just the process. So, Father, in Jesus' name, do what I can't do. Touch the heartbeat. Touch the minds, touch the souls, touch the spirit of everyone under the sound of my voice that's in this church or either listening by the Facebook or whatever they call it. Father, I just pray, Lord, that you just have your way today in the mighty name of Jesus and Kingdom Church said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you sit down, tell them I know a man. I know a man. Hallelujah. I know a man that can. Praise the Lord. I can only see Noah up on this boat and everybody on it with him. We've been on this boat for some quite some time now, Mike, and I ain't seen nothing but water. I've been here for a long minute now. We've been praying, we've been fasting, and Brother Justin, I still ain't heard a good report. Now, Noah, you brought us on this boat, and you said your God was going to save us. Come on, somebody. I just wonder when the good report's coming. I, I just wonder, like your kids will tell you, are we there yet? <laughs> How much further do we got to go? How many more days, Dan? How many more hours do I got to sit on this boat, Georgia? I need a breakthrough, my gracious. I've been fasting and I've been praying. But every time I look out the window, all I see is water. You ever looked out your window and all you seen was problems? Yep. It seems like every time you turn around, there's another one. And when you thought that was it, there come another one behind that. And I thought that was big enough, Dave, but good gracious, somebody, here comes three more bigger than the first two. Yay. Somebody know what I'm talking about in this church. Amen. I found myself in God's waiting room more times than I can count. And I found myself in that room, and it's not a pleasant place sometimes. I don't care how they church it, they want to act it to be. I don't like to wait. Do you? Don't lie to me, you in church. <laughs> I see you at the fast food restaurant, Jeremy. They'll go to another one just as quick because they see a line. None of us like to wait. But I have found myself in God's waiting room more times than I can count. How many of you can be honest to tell me, Pastor, I found myself there more times than I like to say? Yep. Get used to it, but spend a lot of time there. <laughs> Hallelujah, not what you wanted to hear. Amen. Better yet, a better question would be, have you ever found yourself in the in the waiting room and being Noah? Hold on, I'm going to take you there. Daddy, I thought you said if we prayed, God would move something. Pastor, I thought you, you said that, that, that God was on the way. I thought you said, honey, that I had a job coming. Honey, I thought that you said that God was going to deliver this. I thought you said that your God was going to heal this. You ever been nowhere in the back of the room somewhere telling them that God's faithful and you're praying and all you see is water and all they keep telling you about is the problem. And you keep telling them help is on the way. I'll take you to any drug addict and you tell them that Jesus can take that needle from them, that Jesus can take that heroin from them, that Jesus can take this away from them, and they will sit there on the back of it and all they see is water, all they see is problem. You can take it to a, a household that's been torn apart with children are divided, a household's over here, a mama's over here, and a daddy's over here, and they're trying to make ends meet, and they're saying, Pastor, where is your Jesus? And all it is. Now my kids are raised by this baby daddy and by this baby mama. Lord, where is your Jesus? And the whole time my mom's in the back of the waiting room praying. Come on. I know he's faithful. I know the dove won't come back one day, son. He'll find a solid rock to stand on. Amen. But we got to be still and know that it's God right now. And the whole time we want to look out the window and say, all I see is rain. All I see is problems. 
tongues preacher. When? When? I thought you said it would work out. I thought that you said that I would be delivered. I thought that you said my child would be past this by now. I thought you said, Pastor, that if you get a hold of this Jesus, that it would take the alcohol away. I thought you said if you get a hold of this Jesus, that it would take this away. I thought that you said that when, when you started praying that the chains were breaking Jesus. I'm asking, where are you? And Pastor, can you see him on the boat with Noah? How much further do we got to go? Sarah, how many more days do I got to wait? When, Jesus? When, Noah, because God ain't answering me and you're the one that's got the answer to preacher. Tell me something. I found myself in that waiting room more times than I like to count. I sit there and watch them spit at me. Cuss at me. Cuss at my God. Where is he? And I got to be still and know that he's God in the middle of those moments. And I got to tell you that God's on the way. That he's working when you can't see him working. Amen. He's changing things even when you can't see him changing. I know it looks out of control, but God it still remains in control. Amen. Today I want to talk to you. Look at your neighbor before we go any further and tell him it's just the process. It's just it's the process. process. Nobody likes to wait. I'm waiting on this husband to quit talking to me the way he used to talk to me. I'm waiting on him to treat, teach me, uh, treat, treat me with some respect. I, I'm tired of my wife not appreciating me when I go to work. I, I'm tired of waiting on my child to make a change. I, I'm tired of waiting on Mr. Right. I ain't getting no younger Jesus. <laughs> when, Lord? I thought you said that I would be further than where I am right now. And I figured that, Candace, that all the hell that I've been through, that a breakthrough showing up doesn't show up by now. But I find myself still down here. Working nine to five, barely making it me ends meet. And Lord, I'm wondering when you're going to do something. I thought you said I was blessed and highly favored. Can we have church up in here today? Wow. Get your neighbor and tell them it's just a process. Just process. Just I found the worst thing is waiting on God in God's waiting room. Amen. Pastor, what you mean by that? Because it's something that I'm waiting in a waiting room. And I'm waiting on a doctor to come out with some report. You know, he's just a man. He can only do so much, Jeremy. But Gene, when I'm waiting in Jesus' waiting room, or my eye plan on him coming in in the, in the shadow, I'll be healed. Yes. By just the word to go forth to make mama healed again. That Jesus right now, all you have to do is touch the situation. And I wouldn't be homeless, but I'd have a home. I know Jesus that all you have to do is touch this, and it changes everything. So why am I still in this waiting room? I ain't never liked waiting, and I don't think I ever will. How many of you can just stand up and rejoice in patience? <laughs> I'm still waiting. Hallelujah. The Lord has taught me, Christina, it's just a process. And you must learn to love the process. We're going to get deep in this world. You get in a process sometimes, and it looks like this in the middle of God's waiting room. God, I got bills that need to be paid. Don't you know that? I know you want all the cattle on the hill, but the pyre is due, and they're about to cut it off. I need you to do something here. I mean, this child of mine is out of control. But Jesus, I'm not seeing you do nothing. Lord, I prayed and I ain't seeing it, Lord, but I wonder how much longer do I got to sit in a waiting room and waiting on a God that's got all the answers, that's got healing in his hand, and he won't even walk in the room. Can I talk to somebody in this church? Tell somebody it's just a process. Some of you have been waiting on the Lord. Some of you have been waiting on the dove to come back. Just to have a branch in his mouth. Just a sight of hope. Some of you have been waiting on the dove to never come back. So that you know he found resting ground. Some of you are looking to the hills. Where does your hope come from? 
the hope that we are sustained in. It's the hope of our everlasting God that says sometimes these words, be still. No, I am your God. Fear not, for I'm with you. Be not dismayed, this storm will pass. This too shall pass, Jeremy Brown. Come on, somebody. I can see the men. I'm just going to take you what God gives me. I got divine instructions, and I don't want to miss it because if I get Jason in this, I'll mess you all up. I can only see God's men coming back, and Jesus had been put up on the cross, Irma. They now put him in a bar of grave. All hope's gone. They're in the waiting room like never before. And Peter does this in the middle of the wait. Tired of waiting. Sister, I'm tired of waiting on Jesus in this waiting room. I'm going fishing. I'm going to go back to doing what I know that works. At least I can see something moving. At least I can feel something tangible. I think I'll just go fishing. He let all the men out on the boat. And they all go fishing and they try to do things on their own. It was just a process. And they fished all night long. They did everything that they know to do. They threw everything in the tackle box but the tackle box at the fish. We threw nets upon nets. We fished. We don't have no strength left. I don't even have the mind to go on no more, Jesus. I just want to lay down and cry. I'm tired of waiting in your waiting room. When are you going to show up and do something? I fished all night. Can you see him coming in about daylight? Can you see him, sister, coming in about daylight? There's a man on the shoreline. And I want to remind you right now, those that are waiting, there's a man on the shoreline. He's calling your name. I know you fished all night, and I know you're tired. I know you don't even have the words to muster up to pray anymore. But Peter, grab your nets. Come on. Grab my nets. Man, I need to grab a fishing pole because there ain't but one fish in this ocean, and we've been trying to catch him all night long. Wow. They are not here. They have vacated. They are gone. They have evacuated the ocean. <laughs> we fished all night. We threw everything at them, Dave. We tried chicken livers. We tried minnows. We tried it all. We tried shrimp. We tried everything. Nothing is biting. Jesus, I'm tired. I know you're tired, Peter. Grab your nets. And I need you to throw out one more time. Throw out to the left, preacher. What are you saying to me? Well, I'm glad you asked. I want you to understand right now the very thing you've been praying for, the very thing you've been asking God to do in your life. It's got your name on that net. It will never be released to anyone else but you. But it takes a process for that net to come in. Amen. That's right. I know you thought it was your way right away. Brother King lied to you. <laughs> it's on Jesus' time. And Jesus knows exactly when you need to throw the net. He knows exactly when you need the blessing. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's just a process. It's just a process. <laughs> You know, I can tell Josie sometimes, not yet. Jeremy, you've seen her. Lori, you've seen her. Sarah, I know you've seen her. Her arms are crossed. <laughs> lip comes straight out. <laughs> All I said, Megan, was not yet, honey. I'll get you chocolate milk in a minute. <laughs> you would have thought I told her H-E-double-L no. <laughs> can I talk to you for a minute? <laughs> What did he say to me? He told me, no, I'm done with this. It throws a little tantrum. We ain't much different. God don't start answering. We start moving on our own. We start looking for an escape. When God said, all I wanted you to do is sit still and it ain't ready yet. The worst thing you can do is get a blessing and not be ready for it. The 
worst thing God could ever do was give you a blessing and you not be prepared for what he's preparing for you. Somebody shout Jesus in this church. Remember God's delays is not God's denials. Because he's delaying you don't mean he's telling you no. It's just a process, honey. He's working things out. I remember sitting in some places I ain't proud of, thinking, how in the world you going to get me out of this? Why does life got to be like this, Lord? I praise you. You said I'm the head and not the tail, but I feel like I'm dragging. I don't know who this is for, but God brought me here for a reason. When it takes longer for the, the prayer to come through, we find ourselves getting discouraged. We find ourselves getting real impatient. We start finding ourselves in the mirror, Georgia, looking and seeing what's wrong with us. I must have missed it, Lord. What did I do? That's something you disqualified me because I did something to you. I, the devil's whispering to you, who you think you are? Mm -hmm. And you sitting there listening to all that chattering from a lying devil. Thank He's you. been a liar from the beginning of time. He'll be a liar when he's up on our feet. Mm -hmm. Amen. God just getting things ready for you. He's preparing things. It's like Brinkley asking me to drive a car right now. She always wants to drive a car. If you can't even touch the gas pedal. <laughs> Let me give her the keys to that car. And she tear all the pieces and kill herself, kill me, kill anybody else going down the road. The worst thing anybody could ever do would give somebody a blessing that they're not prepared for. Come on, right. A good father Ooh, holds the keys yeah. back. A good father says, not right now. You're not quite ready. Some of you are saying, well, what's wrong with me? Well, maybe it ain't you. It's the problem. Maybe it's the blessing ain't ready for you just yet. So wait on what God's working on. He could be purifying something, burning things away. My God, I remember my wife. And this might sound crazy to you praying for me, wanting me in her life. I need that man. I'm a, yeah, she's a blind Lord of blind somebody. Made that woman think she needed me to be a part of her life. And all these things. And here I was, a drug dealer, liar, a thief, an adulteress. I was everything under the moon. I didn't want nothing to do with Jesus. Didn't want nothing to do with her church. I didn't want nothing to do with anything. Except me. All she kept asking for was that man. God said, it's a process, honey. You don't want that right. I gotta put him in flames. I gotta purify that boy. If I give him to you right now, he'll destroy you. He will break your heart into a million pieces. He will tear everything that you know and sis into pieces. He'll take you from your family. He'll take you on to a life of drugs. He will destroy your even your own concept of even how good God is. Let me have my process with this boy. And then while I'm doing my thing that you can't see, remain faithful. And sit down into the waiting room and know that I'm your God. Amen. Know that I went before you, my God child, if I went before you. What devil in hell is going to stand against you? I'm a good father, honey. I'm not going to give you something to tear the wheels off of this. I'll hold it back. I won't give you the keys until you're ready. I won't open the door until I know that you're able to walk in it. I don't want to walk you in the door and then watch it slam on your face. Or have you crawl back. He said, I want to take you somewhere. And I want to watch you blessed and highly favored. Yeah. Look at your neighbor and tell him it's a process. It's a process. Some of you are in the praying room. The war room. Amen. I call it God's waiting room. God is birthing something in you. He's growing something in you. Stretches you. He does things, you'll know, watch a woman in childbirth, you'll see how strong a woman is. You'll realize, man, you ain't that strong. That's why God chose women to populate the world and not men. That's right. It'll be in one and done. Women are slap crazy. They'll have five, six, seven of them. I'm watching, and I'm like, ain't no way I'll ever do this again. Tie my tubes, I'll never do this again. Put me to sleep. I don't ever want to remember this. Wake me up when it's done. Holler at you, boy. I'm done. Come on, somebody. Mm, look at your neighbor and tell him it's just the process. 
The Bible says this. It says that the steps of a good man are ordered. Amen. The steps of a good man are ordered. Maybe that told me something as soon as God told me that. The steps tells me that it's a process in this step by step. It is a process. But he says the steps of a good man are ordered. I'm not going to let you get there until you're ready. I'm not going to release the blessing in your life until you're ready for the blessing. The worst thing I can ever do, child, is give you this and destroy you or to give you the world and lose your soul. I won't give it to you, son. I'm a good, good father. Your steps are ordered to my steps. You're my child. It's a good thing to belong to Jesus. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. God. Mm. Jesus. I want to be real with you. I, I have found myself waiting on God more times than I can count. And I've learned in the middle of the process, Jeremy, to just stop and look at my feet and say, Lord, you order these steps. So if you made me stop, you make it crooked road straight. If you stop this, it's because you got something better coming. If you took that, then praise God, I didn't need it. We got to get to that place to where we're not crying about when the bird coming back. Noah, I'm tired of seeing the water. I'm tired of seeing the problem. Tell me when we get out of this boat. Instead, rejoice that God is drowning the dinosaurs off. Rejoice that God is drowning out the beast and the demons. Rejoice that your enemies are, have no more power over you. Rejoice that God is preparing a table for you. Somebody shout Jesus. Jesus. Come on, I'm preaching better than y'all letting on in this place. <laughs> King David said it like this. He said, my time is in your hands. My time is in your hands. When God is ready for you to quit killing lions, then he'll let you kill giants. When God is ready for you to come out of the, the sheepfold, then he'll put you in the palace. Amen. When God is, knows that you're ready, child of God, to quit watching at the sheep and watching at the kingdoms, he'll bring you in. But it's a process in the middle of the dark. It's a process, Jessica, behind closed doors. It's a process in waiting on God that something happens inside of you, child of God. You'll learn this thing called patience. You'll learn that God is in control. You'll learn that when things are out of your control, bring God. Because God has the will now. You'll understand when no man can do what you need done, that God is able to do what you can never do. You will understand that a doctor can't do you like Jesus can do you. You will understand in the middle of this process and waiting and growing patience and learning how to trust God even when God says, wait, not yet. Instead of Lord, like my daughter, with your arms crossed and your lip come out, well, not my time. Everybody else, the head and the tail. I'm tired of seeing everybody else blessed. Keep sitting right there because I want to tell you one thing. In the middle of the waiting room, I've learned three things. Number one, in the waiting room is often a testing room. You ever heard that little commercial come on? Beep. This is just a test. <laughs> the Lord has you in that waiting room and it's just a test to see how you will act. Do you trust that he's before you? He's not against you. Do you trust that even when the dark's out, when his light's out and you can't see anything and all you see is darkness surrounding you and everything is told you no, do you believe that God is able to make a door come open even when every door is closed? Amen. Do you trust him in the middle of the storm? God will close doors. He will shut the lights off. He will take everything from you. Don't get it twisted. This is a kingdom church. I came in every church. He'll leave you in a place like this. Amen. I've even been to a place like this, Jeremy. But I can't do nothing but look up. You ever been knocked down, not just to your knees, but on your back? Yes. And God's saying, well, I had to bring you here. Because it's been a long time, son, since you looked up. The devil's had you up on your feet, but you've been looking down the whole time, complaining and murmuring and wondering where I am. Don't you know, son, I got you being still and knowing that I'm your God. Don't you know that I'm going before you, making crooked roads straight? Don't you know that I'm running every devil with your warlock and hell away from you? Don't you understand that I'm preparing a table for you? 
something in her life God said I'm birthing something in that young man that you don't want right now right now you'll get baby's kid and he'll tear your house up he's the problem child you don't want it I'm birthing something in him I'm cutting off branches in him I'm purifying him the heart that he has will tear your heart out the mind that he has will destroy your mind I'm birthing something in you. Whatever you've been praying for, you might be in a birthing room. You might be thinking about a business and how you're going to start it. And God said, you ain't equipped just yet. The worst thing I can do is put you in business and then you go out of business. See, everything that I touch, I multiply. And if God is in it, come on, somebody. He made Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Everything God touches will multiply. God has a way. It's just the birthing room. And it comes with child pains. Watch a woman getting ready to give a baby. You would, you'll think a demon in got on that woman. Look at Jason. You know, don't look at her right now. You know what I'm talking about. Yes, I feel the contractions. There's another one coming, baby. I know it. Now you just holding her hand, ain't saying nothing, but going, Jesus, get me through this one. Just keep her safe. Please get me out of here safe, too. You know what I'm talking about. The third thing I found in the in the waiting room is this. And no matter how bad it gets, there's one thing you can't lose in the waiting room. That's your faith. Because the devil wants to take everything from you. He wants to discourage you. So the Bible says in James, when you lose your faith, you start doubting. When you doubt a holy God, the Bible says that let that man know right now he will not receive anything from the Lord. James chapter 1 verse 9. When doubt creeps in, you threw your prayer right out the window. You can't doubt even when it looks rough. You can't doubt a holy God even when you look out and all you see is water. You can't doubt God that even when you're 43 and you're waiting on God. Or when you're 65 waiting on God to see your child delivered. I got a grandma right now that's 86 years old. She's still waiting in the wait room saying God's going to take this alcohol from my son. I'm like, you won't shake her. You come by there with some doubt, she'll run you out of her house. She'd say, that's my young and God didn't give up on me and I ain't giving up on him. See, church, we got to get there. We got to get to the place where we hold on to faith because when everything's took away from you, that's all you've got to live. Sometimes God allows you in a lion's den with hungry lions looking at you, coming to devour you, coming to destroy you. You got to get like Daniel. My God's able. My God's on time. My God is able to take everything. He's able to burn this house down, build me a mansion on the other side of the hill. Do you know who I serve? Do you know Jehovah Jireh? Do you know a man named Jesus? Because if you don't know, I'll let you know right now. The water's getting deep. That means my daddy is on the way. Somebody shout, Jesus is coming. Jesus. I'm going to close with this. Just to give me something. I heard Steve Harvey say this. And I know you think the preacher, you said Steve Harvey. <laughs> hey, God works on everybody. Yeah. Amen. I heard him say something that was really profound to me. He said, once you ask God for something, he said, God heard you. He said, and God wrapped it up and he sent it. He said, but he'll only send it to faith street. So if you ain't on Faith Street, if your faith is shaking and you don't have no faith no more, you're on the wrong street. You will not get your blessing. You will miss it. It'll go right by you into the next man. Well, Steve Harvey was trying to tell you that even when the rain's raining, 
You got to remain still and know who he is. You got to remain right here. This is the street that I live on. My God's able. When things are impossible, it's possible with my God. Amen. And even with hungry lions, he'll shut the mouth of them too. He's prepared me to fight lions and bears so I'll kill giants. He's preparing me how to take care of sheep so I can move into the palace. He's preparing me to get ready for this man that he's been purifying. He's getting me ready to straighten out everything. But I can't do it until God says that I'm ready. Amen. I'm going to ask everybody if you'll stand to your feet. <laughs> Father God, we come humbly but boldly to your throne of grace today. God, I know we've all found ourselves in a place, Lord, we've been shaken. We found ourselves praying, God, and not seeing things move, God. We've all found ourselves in the waiting room. Father, today, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just want to encourage the one that's been in a waiting room, that's been waiting on you to move, that's been waiting on you to change, that's been waiting on you to heal, that's been waiting on you to rebuild, to wait on you, Lord, to close chapters, to open new chapters. God, whatever it is in this church right now, God, you know exactly what they need. If that's you right now, you looking at your neighbors, you back it up. What you should do is come down to this altar and you find yourself right back in that waiting room and say, God, I'm in the right place. I'm on the right time clock. I'm on your clock, Jesus. And everything that you do is preparing me. You're preparing a table for me. You're preparing a blessing for me, God. I don't want to miss it, God, but I want to remain faithful. I want to remain on the street called faith because, God, you got a delivering package that is on the way to be delivered to me. So, Lord, I'm going to wait till it's delivered. I'm waiting 